Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2022 and I'm diving into a photo. It's an old sunset shot from God, a long time ago, seven, eight, nine years ago. Can't remember exactly, but um, as is typical, the sky is a little too bright because it was sunset, so that's where the light is. The foreground's a little too dark. So I do some basic edits and then I do some filter edits, but then it's really the local adjustments that I add that really just pop this photo, bring it to life. So this one's really about how I'm using local adjustments to really craft my final result. Here's the photo. I've already cropped it, done a little bit of a um, uh, perspective correction. And what I want to do is go in here and start with my basic stuff. So I'm going to go with like a negative 40 basically on highlights to try to pull those down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to bump up the shadows about an eight. The temperature intent, I'm going to go a little bit warmer. So about like a 47, 63, that looks good. And maybe like a negative 14 here or so on tint. Uh, and I'm going to bump the vibrance a little bit, give it about a 10 or a 12, something about like that. So honestly, not a massive difference. There it is before, and there it is after. I've recovered a little bit in the highlights. Got a long way to go, to be honest, to make this sunset really pop. And so generally what I do after I've done my base edits is go into the effects tab and hop into some filters. That's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and get dynamic contrast, and I'm going to go with the basic settings of 0, 15, and 20. But what I want to do is mask this. And so I'm going to go ahead and get a gradient mask, and I'm going to use what's called linear top. And you just drop it in here, and uh, I'm just going to kind of collapse that a little bit, shift it a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit. And that basically applies the uh, gradient there where I want it to go. So if you look at the bottom, there's before and after. Not a big difference. Although I'm actually going to go ahead, here's one of the other nice things about dynamic contrast is down below you actually have some shadows uh, so you can further refine those shadows in that area. I'm only going to go about a three because I'm going to do some other things with local adjustments and I'm going to give it a little bit of vibrance as well. Uh, like maybe a 10. And so if you look at the dynamic contrast overall, there it is before, there it is now. Not bad, but uh, still a ways to go on the photo. While I'm in filters, I'm also going to get color balance. It's just a tool that I love. It just gives you amazing control over color. So in the highlights, I'm gonna leave the hue at zero and I'm gonna to go to like about a nine. This is basically just putting some warmth into the highlights. In the midtones, I'm gonna do about the same, although I'm gonna go a little bit warmer. I'm gonna do about a 13. And then in the shadows, I'm gonna do something very different where I'm gonna to go to the hue of about a 231 and my amount is gonna be about a 24. And so this is adding a little bit of cooler tone into the darker areas, the shadows, whereas I added warmer stuff into the highlights and the midtones. So if you look at my before and after for color balance, there it is before and there it is now. Again, not a massive difference. And what I want to do, of course, is create a realistic uh, but beautiful, you know, a nice color pop in the sunset, but I don't want to be over the top. So another reason I'm going kind of low on the numbers or the amount here in color balance but the other reason is, of course, I'm going to get into local adjustments, and these are just super powerful, and I just I, I love them, to be honest. So I'm going to start with a gradient mask here, and I'm going to do the same thing as I did before with a linear top. So I'm going to drop that in here, and I'm going to just you know move this around a little bit just to make sure I kind of got it where I want it. And what I want to do here is I can close the masking menu. I'm going to bump the exposure a little bit, so like a 0.25. Whoa, I went a little too far. There we go. I'm going to give it a little bit of a structure. So that's going to be about a 15 or 16. I tend to like to do that with ground, uh, especially pavement, rock, things like that, but even the grass. Just give it a little bit of crunch. On the temperature and tint, I'm going to go very light, like a 1 and a 4. So, I mean, honestly, incredibly light. And then saturation zero, but a vibrance of 10. I don't want to overdo the color in the foreground simply because I am going to bump up the color in the sky. I want that to really pop. And so what I don't want is if you have a really saturated sky and a really saturated foreground, it just becomes a kind of a color explosion. And as I said, I'm going for realistic, but I want it to look nice. So, uh, so far, I've got adjustment number one in place. And I think, you know, that's an improvement. There it is before. And then there it is now. Now I'm going to go ahead and get uh, some more stuff. So I'm going to actually take this uh, mask, copy it. I'm going to add another adjustment. And I'm going to go in here and paste this mask, but invert it. So I'm basically now applying it to the sky. Now it defaults to that negative one. I'm going to just 
reset that to zero. I am going to drop the exposure a little bit because that sky needs to be darkened, but only about a 0.25. I'm actually going to take haze down and I'm going to drop that about an 18 or so. That has a nice impact on the sky and kind of pulling that back. Let me show you that again. There it is before. And then I'm going to pull this back a little bit and uh, let's see, I'm at about 18. There it is there. For temperature and tint, the temp, I'm going to go about a negative four. I just like to do that even with sunset skies. I like that blue to really show because that, that's a nice color contrast with the warm tones that are also in the sky. Uh, and tint, I'm going to go to about a seven. Again, everything's fairly low number wise, but I just want to make sure I'm, um, you know, keeping it real, so to speak. Um, I do like my color, but I don't want to go over the top. Uh, and then saturation and vibrance, I'm going to go about a 12 on both. You can see that sky with this adjustment has really popped. So there it is before, and there it is now. Darkened it, uh, you know, a little bit of adjustments with uh, color and things like that, really kind of bringing that to life. And now a couple of more of uh, local adjustments. And the next one I'm going to get is going to be a vignette. And what I want to do is drop that here in the center of the photo. You can see how that has uh, taken place. And I just want to come in here and I've got my adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and drop the exposure a little bit. So this is truly like adding a vignette. Uh, I'm going to go pretty light, maybe something about like that. And I'm going to do with uh, haze, I'm going to go like a negative two, three, something like that. Just a very soft kind of gentle kind of look to it. But I wanted to do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to use it again. And on this one, I'm going to come in and paste, but this time I'm going to invert it. And once again, I'm going to hit reset to get rid of that negative one value. And what I'm going to do here is just a few basic little things. And I'm basically just working on the center of the vignette. So I'm going to do about a 10 there. I'm going to lift the midtones a tiny bit. Uh, I'm going to take structure down like a negative 25, uh, something like that. Just kind of softening that up a little bit. I'm gonna drag haze slightly to the right. That kind of adds a little bit of glow to it. And then saturation and vibrance, I'm gonna bump them both a little bit. So like a, a four and like a seven or eight, something like that. It's just a little bit more color in the center. And if I close this tool and show you the before and after, there it is before and after. And then this previous uh, vignette, which was the, uh, the opposite of the current one. There it is before and after. And in fact, I think I might come in here and actually lift that exposure a little bit. I don't want the vignette to be super like over the top or noticeable, but what I did want to do is create a little bit of a vignette on the uh, obviously darkened edges, uh, but then with this other adjustment in here, you know, making some of these adjustments has actually brightened a little bit of the interior of that. So if you look at it before, and then I turn it back on, you look at it after, it just creates a, a subtle kind of glow. And some of that is the, the haze increasing that, because if I reset haze, you can see there it is before. And frankly, it looks fine like that. Uh, I, I many times will just leave it like that, but I wanted to give it just a little bit of haze because it creates a little bit of more warmth. And for me, like it, slight vignette on the outside darkens that a little bit, but um, adding a little bit of haze and doing these adjustments on the inside of that makes it a little bit brighter there. And that's really where the sun is centered. As you can see, the sun is really just in the center here. And so um, I brightened it a little bit because it seems kind of logical that, hey, that's where the sun is setting. That's where the warm clouds are. Warmth to me is brighter. And the cold stuff, which is kind of the edges where there's more blue in the sky, cold stuff is cooler and therefore darker. And so just a little bit of a, a play there, for lack of a better word, just to create a visual adjustment that kind of suits my taste. But that's how I use local adjustments to really control my photo. So if you look at the before and after, and then if I just come through and turn off all of these local adjustments, you'll see that we really came a long way. Without these, I wouldn't have gotten quite the result. So, you know, gradient mask on the bottom, gradient mask on the sky had a huge impact. And then a reverse vignette, I guess technically a true vignette in this case, and then a radial inverted to, to allow me to focus a little bit on the center. And that gave me the ability to control the different areas of the photo that I really wanted to control in order to get this result. So that's how I'm using local adjustments and using the different masking capabilities, which are super powerful. And even though I spend a lot of time in my videos on the effects tab, I'm trying to make sure that I use local adjustments more often because they do help me target things quite well. And as you can see here, they come in really handy. So that was it, my friends. Hope it helps. Hope it gives you some ideas for your own photos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video and adios.